Hi guys, uh, this is Lawrence. Um, so we got the Ganker EX controller for the Ganker by GJS. The uh, the robots that are pretty rad and fight each other and have controllers that are stick figures mounted to boxes. Um, so what we're gonna do today is lube up these arms because unfortunately these are super stiff and our friend Jojo wants to make them all nice like. Um, along with that with this body if you can see it directly from the front it's off to the side a little bit and we want to make that straight because nobody likes imperfect controls so first thing we start with is or as, as far as uh, tool wise we got a Phillips screwdriver a little bit of lube I took this from the Tamiya 4x4 cars you can use Vaseline you can use pretty much any random lubrication that's not going to destroy your plastics uh, some people use a uh, cube lube for like Rubik's cubes and then we'll need a file for the spring later because it's a single spring that isn't perfectly shaven out the uh, box and please don't call me okay sorry guys we got a little cut off because uh, my darn mom ended up calling me and it's, oh, it's so annoying just kidding it was my girlfriend uh, she's pretty cool uh, so with these screws we have it's all Phillips heads just make sure when you're using your screwdrivers just choose something that's just big enough to be snug. If you choose something too small, you're gonna strip your screws and then you're gonna have a bad day because you're probably not gonna be able to take it apart entirely or you won't be able to put it back together. And nobody likes a bad day. Unless you're into that kind of thing, then I don't know you. Um, so first things first, we're gonna start with one side. Let's do this side. Take off these screws. Sorry if you're not getting the perfect angles, but it took a little bit of time situating this camera and I'm pretty lazy to readjust it. Um, so now we've got the one joint that we could start off with. So, that. so the way these work, it's got a little disc in there just to pretty much restrict all movement for there. For this one, or I take it back, this is not one of the ones <laughs> that you need. Um, but that's how you know it works. So pretty much you just gotta align this little, that little uh, flat groove with the flat groove on this box and then that's pretty much how it knows that it wants the arm straight or bent or whatever. So we'll put that one back together. So now we've got this one here. Let's start by removing this part off the face of it. So each of these segments are going to be two pieces. You're going to have to pop that off. Try to not move around too much stuff because if you dislocate the arm then that's a whole other situation of having to relocate where everything's supposed to be. Uh, if you need any assistance on troubleshooting if you do mess that up then I'll definitely assist you with that so at this point you have this little joint right here uh, this joint has two sections that'll pretty much restrict it from going one direction and the other direction as well sorry that was a bad angle so we got this sometimes you'll hear a little bit of crunching or whatever sound that little creaking sound that's literally just this band right here that's the cable that pretty much Let's, uh, let's the robot know what orientation it wants the arm to be in. That needs to, it, it could just sit around there and it'll make the sounds, but you don't have to cry about it. So now we got our lube. You're gonna take just a tiny drop, just enough to reduce the friction. Cause pretty much the biggest thing of the friction, or biggest thing causing the friction is the plastic wearing away over time which is normal for a lot of things, but at the same time, not everything gets lubed up and fixed over time. So we've got that. We are going to press that back together right here. So now a little bit of wiggling it around just to spread the lube around. And that is moving nicely now. So we can close that part back up. Then we'll move on to the next segment. So after we get that, we'll do the other side, which is the same exact thing, but for the right arm. 
So now you're going to need your right arm lube to lube up the right side because if you lube up the right arm with the left lube then you're going to have a bad day. Not really, please don't think that there's left and right lubes. <laughs> if it gives you a little bit of trouble, just don't rip it right away, but give it a little bit of scolding, or not too much scolding. Just enough to let it know who's boss. So then, now we have this other joint free as well. Same thing as the left side. Take a little drop of lube. If you got a little Vaseline container, you can take like a Q-tip or even your finger, just take a little tiny dollop. If you use too much, then you're just wasting material and then you're gonna end up having random spills everywhere. Not everybody wants that. Wiggle that around a bit. replace that arm so again with this little uh, that little divot get the flat side lined up with this flat nub over here the rest of it's gonna be round it'll be pretty easy to bring it back together so then those are gonna come back together so already you can see a huge difference with that pivot point you're not getting nearly as much uh, as much resistance when you're trying to move it around. Throwing that back together. Again, you want to make sure you use a proper size screwdriver, otherwise you will struggle and have a bad day. So we got the one, and then we got this one right here. Already it's feeling much smoother over time as you play with it longer. It's going to free up more of the joint just because with a new robot and new controls, not all the uh, plastic from the molding is going to be perfect, but you'll make it perfect by practicing and enjoying your time with your Ganker EX, or X, I, I forget what they referred to it as, but it's one of those. Just don't call another letter. So right now what I'm doing is taking off the four Phillips screws off of this little Y joint, pretty much the torso and shoulders. Let me take this apart. It's definitely nice to have a mag pad or something that you can collect the screws with because if you lose them then good luck finding them and you will probably have to use a lot of tape. So now we have that apart. The uh, problem with this is that they designed it well and it's a little hard to get apart because there's a bunch of like little hooks that kind of latch this piece, this thing together. So with assistance or if you don't believe in safety then you'll take a knife or something, usually like a plastic wedge or something to get in between, in between the plastic then you'll just get in between and try to wedge this thing apart. If you flex on if you flex on this arm right here, you'll kind of see that it starts to split in this area of the uh, shoulder. You can stick your knife, hobby knife, pre preferably not like a smaller hobby knife, use like a box cutter or something also thin but something with a little bit more girth that'll get you into the joint and be able to pry the rest of it open. So I'll do that with the other side. Please don't cut yourselves. I do not want to be responsible for anything you do. Okay, so the top, top joint's released. So you can see right here, there's going to be this little hook over here and this little hook over somewhere here. It's blocked off now. But after you free up those, you're going to free up this bottom area also by taking your hobby knife or wedge or box cutter and freeing this up. Please don't cut into yourself. If you cut into yourself, use your thumb or some kind of thing to block it from 
going straight through your body. Because if you eviscerate yourself while doing this, you won't be able to enjoy your Ganker EX. Okay. So smart people, take off the bottom screws first. On the opposite side of these screws, at the bottom of here, you'll end up seeing these two screws. That'll definitely give you an easier time than it would trying to just pry it off. These screws are slightly longer than the original four screws off the top end. Here is the difference between the different sizes. It's barely like a quarter of a centimeter difference. But it makes... It'll make it easier for you if you separate those nicely. So getting this apart, this is where things get exciting. So, right now you'll see some things ended up dropping apart. You have this little bit of tape in here. This is probably foam from the GJS factory. That's not important. If you get tape in there and you make it disappear, no worries. Um, so right now, we've got most of this robot apart. Or this controller. So you see these joints again right here. These joints will end up locking into this pin. So then you just have to make sure that this, these two are oriented to the bottom side. Sorry, we'll get this. Better angles for you guys in theory. Let me take this apart. So we've got this little hole and this little hole will line up with these two peg, these pegs over here. You can kind of see that, so you see one and two. Those will go onto the armpit side of the uh, shoulders. Make sure you're able to remember which side is which, because that'll make your life easier when you're putting it back together. Um, off of this end, you'll have these two that are not the same height, these little pegs right here. Uh, reason being, the shorter peg is supposed to line up with this part right here. Um, you'll kind of see that if I separate that from everything else. Let's give you that. Yeah, you see this peg right here? That is going to be going along with the waist, and that is how the robot will know if you're pivoting the shoulders or not. With. So we have those four, those three joints. So we have add, adding lube onto the left shoulder. Sorry guys if this isn't the most detailed version of any Ganker tutorials, but then again, good luck finding other tutorials. Uh, you'll lube these, and then you lube the bottom shaft. Aha! That is what she said. And then we've got this shoulder. You could lube the shoulder side or the arm side. It doesn't really matter as long as it's enough to reach across the whole thing. And again, as you move the joints, it'll spread the lube around and then give you a better time when you're when you're playing with these things. So, again, what I said before, this arm will go to the armpit side of that shoulder piece, and you will press that into the groove to let it sit. I'll get this down to the base, and then up close, you'll be able to see where it's supposed to be sitting. These bars right here will end up sitting in those holes. Just gotta make sure everything's adjusted. This, this little joint, make sure it's lined up properly with that. You're gonna take this. If you want, then you can throw, you can throw more lube under the sides. I'm going to do that just because I have extra inside this tube and 
it's not going to go any go to any other projects at the moment. Again, this could be Vaseline, it could be Cube Lube, it could be pretty much any remote control car or any hobby lube for plastics that won't eat them. So you have that, you're going to hear some snapping when you're throwing it back together. That is fine because they're not scary sounds. Right now what I'm encountering is a little bit of malalignment on the bottom end. And with that, just got to figure out where it's snagging on. Let's find out. Let's prop this back open. So, top shoulder pieces back into the grooves. Sorry, this is taking a minute. Might take long for you too, but if you can beat my time, then good on you. Congratulations on better on being a better modder than I am. Okay, so short side. Short side should be here. So we will press those together. It clicks in perfectly now. So now we have a top and lower, or upper and lower, all lubed up and nice like. We'll take the shorter Phillips heads and then we will throw those screws back into the top end. All right, we got the top screws. Let's flip it over and get the bottoms. Hi. After we get these bottom screws, then we are pretty much good with the lube job. All the friction has been reduced, and then we'll make it all nice. Doing the recording, Mom. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, guys. We got these together, now we are definitely more free than we once were. These joints are nice and they definitely work now. Okay. So for this part, let's see what we did wrong. Troubleshooting is one of the fun parts of this. So what I may have done is I may have put that side back together backwards. Okay, so what I just did is something that you can definitely learn from. <laughs> the, uh, you did. Yep, you see that. So Jojo sees this. So these shoulder joints, I flipped them upside down. So the problem with having them upside down is your bot does not move like this so pretty much all we have to do right now is again take off these shoulder joints and after we get that done then we'll just flip them 180 and put them in their proper <laughs> orientation i think you had it um facing the other way when you did it i did that's why, yeah that's I why i got confused good call <laughs> All right, so learning experiences. Make sure it's facing you. Make <laughs> sure it's facing you when you're putting these screws back in, or putting the arms back in. Otherwise, you'll end up struggling. If you have a motorized screwdriver, then you're totally cool. But I would not recommend putting the screws back with a motorized one. If you overcrank the screws, then you're gonna have a bad day, and good luck finding a new one. Okay, so we're back here. Let's get the knife back into the side and do some splitting. So we're gonna rip that top end off again, just like we did earlier. This time. are going to 
flip the arms into the proper orientation and make sure yeah pretty much you could take this since that this side this is the front side you could tell by the light you want to make sure the short the arms can slide forward backward and do everything that a normal robot would do as opposed to this side where you're totally stuck in the opposite direction so yeah just make sure that you're freed up and in the right direction before putting it back together it might be this being the back side I guess there's a front side and a back side do they look different? Yeah, they, these two sides are opposite. They're different. Just gotta make sure we're lining it up nice. Okay, now we have this back side we're gonna throw onto here. Again, make sure that this peg is on the shorter side in conjunction with this peg which will be shorter as well okay we got that and we are back in business so biggest things to note is that there is a front side and back side to the uh, to these shoulders pretty much in the end after you're done you want the four the four of these back screws, you want the Phillips screws to be facing you. So the open side of the screws will be facing the back of the controller, the two screws in the bottom facing the front. So good learning for you guys. And me as well. Um, let's get this thing back together. Magnetic screwdriver definitely helps. If you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, you can easily turn one into one by taking any cheap metal, like even a fridge magnet works. You can just pretty much stroke against it, against the uh, against the magnet with the screwdriver. Eventually, it'll end up gaining some sort of magnet or magnetivity. Is that the term? Magnetism. Magnetism. I guess. But yeah, just run it a couple times, and then bam, you can pick up screws. So we got the two small in the front. A controller that is looped up and nice like definitely more free than it once was as you play with it more it'll definitely be able to swing you can see these joints are definitely moving more freely than they were prior to that okay next we're gonna get onto the alignment so you see how this controller is slightly to the left you can see this the edges of the inner circle is not exactly where it should be around here and it's a bending off to the side let's take that apart uh, the way we do that is by gripping the inner circle or this whole like dome this dome part of this uh, of this controller just pretty much twist it to the right side or counterclockwise to the left um, then you just lift that up that'll free up a lot of the internals on the inside and allow you to work on the inside um, okay, disclaimer, this part's a little bit more sketchy. If you do this, do this with extreme caution. But, uh, yeah, pretty much these little green parts, those are little, uh, those are like the directional points on a controller that pretty much let the controller know which angle it's going to, forward, backward, left, or right. Um, yeah, be careful not to destroy those. You're going to have a bad day if you do. Uh, so what we got right here, I don't exactly have the best lighting. 
um, you're going to have a screw deep into here. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. So there's going to be four screws. Let's get that. This little screw over here. There's one. There's a second one. It's going to be a little closer to you. Sorry, this is again second video or first video really, but not exactly too much into doing tutorials with anything. So you got that screw over here, and then you're going to have two on the opposite end, which are going to be oh there we go. We have better lighting now. It's going to be here, that one over yonder, and then you will have one here. So let's undo those, and then that'll free up the base to be unplugged from anything else, or from everything else. So the screws will come out. You're not really going to see any other screws in there, so if they don't come out right away, then you can just leave them until you take out the rest of the screws. Just pull them all at once. Or if you're worried of losing them, take some take some pliers or tweezers then just take them out as you go I'm just gonna be more Phillips screws about this size so take those other screws out you're not really gonna see any other screws aside from these ones you're gonna see these right beneath the dome don't take those out just yet Otherwise, you'll have a bad day. So after those four are out, you are going to want to pull out or pull up. Make sure you're not losing these screws. Once again, if you have the screws, then just take them and collect them to wherever you can for now. And now we've got this whole base. Uh, these prongs. These prongs connect to these, this little, all these pinholes right here. Um, yeah, you pretty much just took out these screws from one, two, three, and four over that way, and then they correlate to these four pins or these four tabs. Um, okay, next thing to do: these little black two tabs. You're pretty much gonna pop that, those up maybe like a millimeter up just enough to get this band out you're gonna pull this band out and try not to rip that because you'll have a bad day and then these four these four you have to be careful with these are gonna be coming out a little just towards you best way of doing that is good question we'll try not to worry about those just yet Okay, so now we have this. Let's uh, free up that screw, or these four screws. So again, the ones that we did not want to take out initially. It's going to be one, two, right here, and then the other two on the opposite ends. So you're just going to undo those. Keep those separate and to the side just so you don't lose them. And we have one more. You already see this whole thing trying to take itself apart. That's fine. You don't have to worry too much about it. Just make sure everything's controlled when it all comes apart. There's going to be four little rings that have a possibility of coming out. Don't lose them. They might fall apart. So what I'm doing right now, I'm pinching with my thumb, my thumb and my pointer finger against this top to make sure it doesn't fall off right away. Just make it a little graceful when you're taking this all apart. See so these green boxes. Careful with those. I'm gonna slowly pry this up and away. Okay, so we freed up that. 
now there's going to be a the green. So the green boxes they're going to have little plastic pieces on the inside. Try not to lose those. So right now there's going to be little flat tabs on here. One is going to be metal. One's going to be plastic on all four sides of these prongs. So right now what we just did was remove that. Um, you're going to have to watch out for this spring and then this little four piece, this little four prong type of circle. So right now what we just did was after removing that, this ended up misplacing. Uh, the way you know how it's oriented back inside you're going to pull it apart. It's going to look a tiny wonky you're going to feel like you broke it, but hopefully you didn't. You're going to have a little waviness over here. And then pretty much what's going to be happening is you're going to have this little metal tab part right here. You're not exactly getting the best image of that. Um, that little tab overhanging and sticking out more is going to be on the top end. That's going to fit right back into here. And then you're just going to press that in place. You could use tweezers. If you can use your fingers, then definitely use those. But whatever's controlled, and we'll make this box sit in place. So what I did before, and I'll do it again with this. Don't bend it too far, because you're going to end up snapping the contacts. But bend it just enough to free it from these four little boxes. So again, what I was saying before, you might lose these small rings, please don't. I did, and then I had to end up fabricating a little tiny washer just to make it work. So you're going to have four little washers that are going to be sitting on top of each of these prongs. These don't lose. If you lose them, then have fun trying to find them and put them back in place. So they end up fitting on top on top of these little prongs. There's pretty much just little pivot points where the uh, where the robot's gonna know. Or it's just pretty, it's pretty much they're just little washers to keep your robot more free and moving nicely. Totally just drop that down there. Let's get that out of the way. And then back into the open where we can see it and potentially use it again. So these you're going to want to all place back in and try your best not to lose them. If you hold it upside down then you can just set it and then let them hang. So then while they're hanging you can either have a friend hold it or you can take your tweezers just wedge them in there just to keep this panel uh, forward and holding the uh, holding all these washers in place so next we're going to put that to the side so the biggest reason that your controller is hanging off to the side if it is if it's grinded down perfectly then good luck then you're, you're a lucky person congratulations you have a nice controller uh, so these springs, they were initially grinded on the top side and the bottom side to in attempt to make it more flat. So the way that you're going to, you're going to to judge where you need to grind this to make it flat is by looking at or pretty much line it up on the ground. Uh, after you line it up on the ground, you can either put this cap back onto it where it originally was and figure out where the low point is. So like the low point here is on this side, so that means I'm gonna have to grind on this side. Uh, what I mean by low point is if I put it against the file here, you'll end up kind of seeing that the spring kind of chooses one direction. So right now, you see it's leaning towards my pointer finger as opposed to my thumb. I'm not putting extra any extra pressure. 
but you can see that it's pretty uneven. What we're going to do with that is we're going to take the thumb side, pretty much the end of this spring, and then we're just going to start grinding away at it just to make it flat. So again, put your cap on it, figure out where the high point is, take that high point and start shaving. So I'm going to start shaving off at this side because that's what seems to be making it tall. A little bit of grinding noise, sorry for the sounds. Periodically just end up looking at the spring, or just take a look at the spring and then see how much you've grinded off. Uh, it's better to take off less than more, but because again, if just like a haircut, if you take off less you can always remove more material over time. Just a little bit more filing till start look starts looking more level. Like right here, it definitely looks more well adjusted and in parallel with the rest of it. It's never gonna be perfect. If you make it perfect, congratulations, but too much OCD can make this project take days. So after you're done, vacuum your shavings or be rude to yourself and just wipe it onto your workshop floor, or in my case, my bedroom floor. I'll vacuum it a bit. Um, okay, so we have this. Let's put this back inside. So spring, it's just gonna sit in there like regular. So these four prongs, they're going to fit inside these little grooves right here. So we got the one, two, three, and four. It's gonna fit diagonally. It'll sit, just believe in yourself. So after you have that, this is going to line up with the rest of the controller. So if you end up losing one of your washers from that last endeavor, you can easily grab that washer again, replace it, get it to sit nicely on here. And then next, we are going to find these four prongs, figure out the front of the controller, figure out the front of the controller by putting the arms down into the sides. So, and then you see these prongs facing forward, so that's the front. This, you're gonna end up orienting these prongs alongside the front of this controller. So you have the prongs on the right side, fronts on the right side, or here's the front, prongs on the right side. So then, prongs being on the right side, we're gonna have to rotate that out. And then the body, we have to make sure we flip that around. And line it up well with everything else. Or you could just make your life easier and take this band. This band's gonna be lined up with this. The uh, thing that you pulled it out of earlier. So, make sure this thing doesn't drop forward into it, so slowly, or you can just put everything sideways while you're doing this. You're going to push this all together. The green stuff, we're going to link back together after, after we're done setting all these screws. So you're going to take the four screws that you used earlier, for the top part and throw those back in. Wish you the best of luck throwing these back together. It can be a little tedious. See, after you pin one side, you can kind of squeeze the other and then work your way around. It's always to start doing opposite ends. If you do opposite ends, it'll make it easier to get the last two screws in. If you have a friend or somebody that can take pictures while you're working on this, that definitely would help. Because if you're not recording and you end up forgetting how things go back together, then you're not going to have a good day. But I wish you a good day, so let's do this properly the first time. And these screws are going to be And we've got one more draw. 
what I'm kind of doing is flexing the controller in one direction just to give myself a little bit more clearance while I'm working these in. And after you're done, it'll sit nice. So then, on the opposite ends, you're going to see that these are little flat tabs. These flat tabs are going to line up with the flat holes of these green pieces right here. When you have that, you can just press in, and then it'll, it'll sit nicely as long as you line it up nice. So again, you see these little these little prongs. They're going to be sitting flat inside the holes. This band, you are going to lift the tabs up once again and then just feed it in. Once you have that in, you can take the black tabs, push them back in. After those are pushed back in, you're pretty much good to go. This prong sits right here inside, the, or pretty much pins in the holes. This little band sometimes, or with mine, I ended up getting a little clicky sound. That was from the band snapping around. Uh, you can kind of tuck this part into the base around here. And that'll definitely help you in reducing the sounds. But everything will end up just lining up into itself. So once you have that, you are going to take the screws that you had from earlier And then, like before, you're going to bend this to the side. This is where it's definitely more imperative to have something that's magnetic. Because that'll be much easier in guiding your screws back into those holes that you were in originally. So, you're throwing those into the holes right there. After you get all four, mm -hmm. are going to take that dome cover and then just twist it back on clockwise. Um, you might have a little bit of trouble figuring out which part is the front of the dome cover thing, but as you gently twist it around, you'll end up finding which hole goes where. There's, little, there's four little prongs that end up uh, four little prongs that line up into the sides of the box part of the controller. So right here, you have these little tabs. Make sure these little tabs line up with these little grooves. If it doesn't work with one setting, like this one, I got it perfect the right time, the first time. But if you line it up improperly, they're not gonna sit nice. You're gonna end up having like a little skinny groove in the wrong spot. But uh, yeah, if you want the easiest way, there's four kind of wide tabs here. There's one tab that's skinnier than the rest with the hook. You're gonna take that and then you're gonna feed it to the back side right next to the GJS robot logo on the, uh, on the controller. So then, or I got that out of frame. Let's do that again. So pretty much you have this skinny tab right here in a comparison to these thicker tabs with the hooks. That'll go right next to the uh, GGS logo. And just twist in place. And now you have a more balanced controller with definitely more flexible arms. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, sorry that I got the body backwards earlier, but now we know that issue and hopefully you don't make the same mistake. So everything's smooth, this is Lawrence. Uh, right next to me, uh, Jojo, she wasn't really talking, but that's okay. We get to play with toys now. Um, we'll talk to you guys soon, okay, bye. The exciting part's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, <The> exciting. <laughs> get ready for the battles, where we swing these arms around and push some buttons and stare at each other's robots dying. Okay, bye.